I wonder if you can have any advice about ego longing for something. Um, for example, an experience that uh, was so wonderful that I want to I wanted to re be repeated. It could even be a spiritual experience. It's not, it's not uncommon for people who have had, and then that 10 years ago, I had this great medita meditative experience. And ever since I've been trying to get back there and... <laughs> yeah, something like that, for example. Is it, uh, in your case, is it one particular thing especially, or is it something that happens frequently, the, the thinking back on monetary experience, is it, or is it something that you want to mention, to tell us what it is, or would you prefer not to say what it is? Yeah, uh, of course I, I can be open. It's um, spending time together with a particular person, and um, it's wonderful. And I do realize that ego wants more, and it's never enough. And I do see it's uh, kind of insane. And that person <laughs> is no longer in your life? Or yeah, is he is in my life. Oh, but why don't you spend time now with him? <laughs> <laughs> because I do realize that uh, he's another human being, and he might want something else. And it feels not healthy to have this desire to, to be with that person all the time. I would like to have my freedom too. So you are in a relationship with that person, but you're not living together. Yes. Right. And you want to spend more time. Yes. But he wants to have his freedom. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's good sometimes to know a few details of the question because that yeah, can be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> details are very important. Sometimes I've had, before I answer your question, I don't know if there is an answer, we'll see. Uh, sometimes people send me uh, manuscripts of things they have written. Often it's called My Life. And uh, and often I read and, and I read things like um, when I was between the age of six and ten, I went through the most horrific experiences with my dad, who had issues with this and that, and I was totally. And it's all abstract, and the reader cannot even imagine what exactly did happen, except we are told it's horrific, and they don't, and they say, I'd, and I don't want to go into it here. Well, if you don't go into it, nobody's going to read it. People want to know concretely what, what actually happened. <clears throat> and anyway, that's... <laughs> it's, it's helpful to know, because then we can truly relate to the question. <clears throat> It's uh, the uh, important thing is to become more comfortable with yourself and spending time with yourself. Now, in order to become more comfortable with that, you have to go more deeply into yourself where the what I sometimes call, I haven't used this term here so far, but recently have been using it occasionally, what I call the deep I, not this I, the first person singular I, the deep I as opposed to the surface I. The surface I is of course the egoic identity, the things that normally people refer to when they use the word I, they refer to me and my story and my needs and my desires and my anxieties and my ambitions, that's I, but, and I call that the surface I that is identified with forms and is, feels certain needs, continuous needs, and the surface I lives in a state of frequent and in some in cases or many cases permanent and permanent state of unease at best 
unease, in, uh, not quite, not completely satisfied, except briefly, just after a, a great meal with two glasses of wine. Ah, but of course you're moving towards unconsciousness. Or after having sex, perhaps, for a little while. Ah, no more desires. I mean, of course, the desire movement is just starting up again at the back, and an hour later, the unease comes back. The, this is the... Uh, Freud wrote this book, uh, I read it, 30 years ago, so I don't remember exactly what's in it, but I remember the title. Uh, the Unease in Culture, it's the English translation. Uh, the, the un, he's saying the, 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 the entire, there's an unease that underlies civilization. Now, I assume, if I don't remember the details, he says a civilization needs this unease, but I think he's wrong. Uh, the, the original word for unease, as used by Freud, for those of you who speak German, is das Unbehagen, das Unbehagen, translated into English as unease. Uh, so there is an almost continuous sense of unease, and it says, I, what I need, I need, I need. I need. Sometimes you don't even know what it is you need, but there's just a neediness, a free-floating neediness. And these are all symptoms of the surface eye. And as long as you are, live on the surface eye, then you can't get rid of these symptoms. They will remain. So the practice is exactly why you're here. This is the reason why you've come here. You've come here in order to go beyond, in order to transcend the surface eye. It'll still be there, but it's no longer the foundation for your sense of identity. So you become still, and the mind subsides, and then you begin to, at first, just as little glimpses, little glimpses of presence of yourself, as experiencing yourself as, as an underlying presence, consciousness. You become aware that you are conscious or consciousness. And at first it seems to be insignificant. Okay, and the mind says, and now what? And, and you just, you just, <laughs> oh, you, it does, yes, I knew that. <laughs> so it's, and, and now what do I do with that? Now, where does that take me? So you have to, Give yourself a little bit more space, because space is exactly what you want, and allow yourself to go more deeply. And, and then the thoughts will keep coming in and say, think about something else. Think about what you need. <laughs> this is what you need on a truer level, but it's not so much that you need it because you already have it, but you need to be conscious that you have it, that you need to be conscious of the deep eye. It's already there. You don't need to bring it to you or to go do penance or uh, uh, work hard for the next 25 years and then find it. No, it's already there. So you have to give yourself that space where you go within what we're doing here, I mean, by coming here, you, you, you are doing it because you realize that the solution to your so-called problem lies here, which means it's all about you, lies in you. Become still. Find that dimension of stillness in you where you're fully alert but not thinking. Five seconds and then a little longer. Go into nature, allow nature to help you. Look at a tree, allow the tree to teach you stillness. Look at a tree for two minutes, and you will notice the tree exists surrounded by stillness, and it's very still. It's, and so that you tune into that. So you, go into na you look at the sky, the spaciousness, I take photos of the sky all the time. I think they, they 
showed some here before. It had to be cropped a bit, unfortunately, but in the original photo there's even more spaciousness. Because I love the spaciousness of the sky, because the moment you take that in, you become aware of spaciousness in you. The moment you look at the spaciousness of the sky, you're not thinking. You're just taking it all in, and then become aware of the presence that's taking it all in. You are that, and uh, this presence then, you, f you feel that more and more strongly in you, the still presence, and that is not a place that needs anything. And there you become, you, you're at home then, at home with yourself, rather than always trying to get home, because it's the ego state, so to speak, it's, I'm trying to get home, but where is home? You, you never feel, this is, this is where I belong, this is where, you might think sometimes the physical place is it, but it's not it. Om, Om, Om. It's wonderful that these, the English word and the Om are so closely related. So the answer is in yourself, uh, the more you live from the deep eye, the less you need the other. But that, does, that also means the more deeply you can relate to the other, because then you can relate to the other no longer through your neediness, but through your aliveness, through your inner peace, and you can share that with the other. And then the other wants to spend more time with you because it's so lovely to be around somebody who doesn't need anything. And the other then feels so much, feels so good to be with you. But that's not why you do it. That's not why you go there. But so the, the thing with this, uh, it's, it's written somewhere. I don't remember where. Well, I do. And the the things that you that you need, all the things that you need, or more accurately, the things that you think you need, many of those things, when you connect with a deep eye, will be added unto you. They will be added. Now, what does it mean? Added. Added means you no longer need them. And then you get them. You didn't get them when you needed them. This is the irony of the universe. The universe is smiling, or God. And when you don't need, it comes, or he comes. When you need, it stays away, or he stays away. <laughs> That's a, well, the ego says, well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and another way, another story, what happened to me is the, in my 20s, when the ego was growing and growing and growing, and I was becoming more and more unhappy, if I had gone to a psychic, and the psychic had said to me, you will become a great spiritual teacher, the ego would have said, wow, this is so great, wonderful, I'll be great spiritual teacher. Uh, it would have been very elated. But if it had been a good psychic, he or she would have added, but you have to die first. You have to die to the illusory self, and then Yes, it may be satisfying when you're a great spiritual teacher, but you don't even think of yourself as a great spiritual teacher, and you, you do not regard it as a personal satisfaction. There is a something satisfying there, but not a personal, like, I did something. And if the psyche had predicted that, the ego would have said, hmm, I'm not sure if I want it anymore. <laughs> So, that's, so the paradox is the adding on. Seek first that, find that, 
And then the things that you thought you needed will be added on. And that's, it's miraculous how that works. And so that's good. So the whole situation has brought you here. It's all perfectly designed to bring about your awakening. Thank you. Thank you.